Hello everyone, this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel. Uh, I wanted to make a brief video and show you how to find a short in a Bedini type pulse motor. Uh, I know I've addressed this on other videos, but I've never made a video specifically to allow people to, when they're doing a search on YouTube, to find this answer. So this is what this video is for. If you noticed here, I hooked a meter up to show continuity through the input of the motor. Right now I've got a chip in this that's defective. When I turn that on, I'm getting continuity through one of the chips. One of the chips is burned out. What I want to do is find that chip and turn that off for now. But basically, if you think about it like this, this chip is a door that's allowing the current to flow through on the pulse. So if this door is broken, it can either be a direct dead short, like in the case of the motor here, or you can have a chip where the door is dented or cracked, and it allows a, a bleed through voltage of the current. Now what this does is, the motor might seem to run fine, but what is actually happening is the current is bleeding into the circuit which means that when it goes to form the radiant energy part of the motor, it can't do that because there's a current already present there. The gate has to close completely in order for the radiant energy to be formed. You may have a motor that's running perfectly, but what you have really is you can have a small leakage across the gate and then they can't form the radiant energy part because the circuit on that side is all tied together. So you would get a complete inability to create radiant energy by having a dented or cracked door in the chip. This is something to think about if your performance drops off. It could be the chip is the problem. Okay, this is the positive where the positive connects to each individual coil five windings running through three coils. Okay, you ha we have five leads coming from the coils tied through this bus. And if I turn this on, we, we're getting con conductivity through the positive and the negative from the burnout chip. So what I want to do here is loosen up the one that I know it is in order to show you where we're, our problem is. Okay, now that means that chip number four is defective. The gate's wide open, the door's broken. So, by taking that wire off, I know chip four needs to be replaced. So, in this case, I would just I, none of the other chips are bad because if they were, I would still be getting a tone here, and I'm not. So I'm going to hook this back up, and I know it's chip 4, so I'll remove chip 4 and correct the problem. Okay, I've turned it back over here, and I'm going to remove this chip which is chip number four, one, two, three, four. And it helps to label this so you know which chip goes to which coil. So I'll remove that. Now with it still hooked up, we're not getting continuity anymore. When the chip is inserted, you have continuity. Uh, it actually acts as a good chip tester. If you pull one of the chips out, you can test multiple chips um, easily doing it this way. So this chip's bad, it's toast in the trash. Okay now this chip I pulled for another reason. Now if you see it's reading 70 on, on the meter which means the chip has a crack in the door. It's actually not a dead short but what it's doing is allowing the current to trickle through the circuit and stop the radiant energy from forming at the collapse of the field because the field doesn't completely collapse. So even though this chip doesn't give me a continuity tone, it almost does, it is defective. And just as 
detrimental to your performance as a dead short. A little less dangerous, but nonetheless uh, just as detrimental. So uh, just to reiterate what is happening here is as the circuit pulses, the, the doorway is cracked open by the electromagnetic uh, magneto effect created by the coil. And as that door is cracked open, um, the current starts to flow. And as the current flows, it induces more current into the gate. And the gate just swings open completely. And that's when it fires. And in most cases, that's actually happening beyond the magnet. It's not happening right on top of it. It's happening past the magnet. And uh, the bigger motor we have, uh, you can actually use a timing light uh, to see this fact. But uh, what's happening is it's pulsing past, just past the coil. Um, and if the gate is not completely closed, it, it stops the radiant energy from being formed. Um, so that's just a little lowdown on how the circuit works and how to find a short. It's good to go. It's now charging this cordless drill battery through this modified connection. Uh, generally, I'll let this 12 volt battery will run all the way up to 20 volts. That'll give me a good charge on this cordless drill. Got about three of them floating around here that picked up for three bucks at the thrift store. And that's how you fix a Bedini circuit. Uh, this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel, signing out.